Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Wheel of Horror. If you haven't seen the first episode, I'll link it down in the description. But basically, it's the same exact thing. You're going to spin a wheel, whatever it lands on, I watch, and whoever suggests it gets a shout out. So, the movies we have are Hellraiser, House on Haunted Hill, It Follows, The Conjuring, Tremors, and The Stranger Calls, Hush, Bad Moon, Opera, and Spin Wheel of Terrible Horror Movies. That's new, but basically, it's just a wheel of terrible horror movies. I don't want that. I'm going to cry if I get that. But here we go. Come on, give me something good. And it is... It's The Conjuring. So thank you, Matt, for suggesting The Conjuring. And let's get to the review. I'm really excited to review this movie. I'm so glad that Matt suggested it and that it lands on this, because this is one of my favorite horror movies. The Conjuring is directed by James Wan and stars Vera Farminga, Patrick Wilson, Ron Livingston, and Lily Taylor, and is about demonologist Ed and Lorraine Warren, who are summoned to the Perrin household after supernatural occurrences begin to threaten the family. The door is just opened on its own. You give us a sign that you want to communicate with us. Watching it again, I did see a few more flaws than uh, the first time I watched it, but honestly, it didn't take away from the experience at all. This is a great horror movie and one of James Wan's best films. And honestly, he does such a great job with low budget films. This film was $20 million, which is kind of low budget uh, compared to movies that are coming out nowadays. I mean, look at Marvel movies. They're probably like $50 million to $100 million budgets, but this one's $20 million, but... Some of his other great films, including Saw, was only $1.2 million. Insidious, that one was only one point five. His flop, which, honestly, that's not even a... His flop isn't that bad of a movie. Dead Silence was also $20 million, and it did make its money back. It got $22 million. Maybe I'll do a review of it one day, but who knows. But this is a great movie by James Wan. I mean, the scares in this movie are great. The acting is phenomenal. I mean, when I saw Joey King again, I all the memories of all of her terrible movies that she's in, like The Kissing Booth and Slender Man, all just started flooding back. But honestly, she does such a great job in this movie as one of the children. <laughs> Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson are definitely the stars of the film. They play, they're the ones who play Ed and Lorraine Warren. And honestly, it feels at points that they're supporting characters when they are the main characters of the movie. It's just because they show the parent family a lot and it'll just cut back to little scenes going back to uh, Ed and Lorraine giving like lectures to students or just people in the public to know more about like paranormal activity. Not that movie. <laughs> That's a bad movie. But yeah, about supernatural occurrences and paranormal activity happening in people's homes. And they're the best part of the movie. I mean, Vera Farmiga as Lorraine, she has such a great uh, storyline and arc to her character. And Patrick Wilson does such a great job as the husband. I mean, you could tell that he worries about her. And you understand why later on it's not more of like, it's a husband worry, but also it's He's fearful for something that could happen to her again, which I won't get into spoilers, but that's a big plot point of the movie. It's really interesting to think, though, how this movie sparked up an entire universe, although most of the universe is terrible, with really the only good movies that I find being The Conjuring, The Conjuring 2, maybe Annabelle Creation, but even that's not that great, but yeah. It sparked a whole universe of really disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> the movie does a good job of trying to scare you with a low budget. I mean, it's a lot of like doors closing and opening and just creepy stuff like that. But what really is the most frightening part is what you can't see. And sometimes they'll do a scare with a character saying something like there's something behind you. But the audience cannot see anything. And... Just looking at the actresses' faces when that happens, or the actors in some instances, it honestly, it just makes your heart start to beat faster, and those are some of the best scares of this movie. I mean, 
my favorite is probably uh, the one that involves Joey Kang. She does such a great job of acting in that scene, which is surprising to say. I mean, she doesn't act that great in a lot of other movies, but in that specific scene, she does such a great job, and I really felt for her character. I mean, you, you end up start to worry about the family, and it does a great job of uh, making you not know what's going to happen. Because, you know, a lot of horror movies, they try to do that twist where it's a bad ending and everyone dies, so... It does a good job of keeping uh, the tension high and not knowing what's going to happen. And coming to the end, you're really frightened and don't know what's going to happen. And they do a great job of ending it as well. I won't spoil it, but yeah. One of my favorite parts about the movie is the cinematography. I'm not sure who was doing the cinematography of the movie. Tina, you could flash uh, his name on the screen if you want in a picture of him. I don't know if he's cute or not, but we'll say he's cute. But he does such a great job with it. I mean, they film in a lot of different ways. And what I mean by that is that they have your normal filming style of like, you know, cutting between shots and stuff like that. But also they do a cool, uh, he does a cool little trick of having the camera move. So like in one specific scene, there's a, the mom, she's walking through the hallway and you see the camera up above her. And it moves with her to where it's uh, upside down everything. And I thought that's one of the coolest shots in the entire movie. And there's so many other cool shots like that. There's some uh, first person shots, which I didn't expect. And I completely forgot about watching it on uh, until watching it on the second viewing. And there's other uh, cool shots like one of the characters is filming everything that's happening. And you see it from... Uh, from the point of view of of the camera and they're honestly such cool shots and how James Wan was able to do it with the budget of 20 million is just astonishing because this really is a great movie but now that we talked about a lot of positives there are a few negatives with this movie unfortunately and one really big one for me is how boring the beginning is the film starts out with Ed and Lorraine and their investigation of the Annabelle doll and honestly, it was just so boring, and the jump scares weren't that scary. And watching it, I, it made me fearful for the rest of the movie. Honestly, I was like, oh man, is this movie not going to hold up? I mean, it was only made seven years ago. It should hold up, which it does. But the beginning, honest, it scared me a little bit. I was a little nervous. I, I, can't, I can't lie. I was a little nervous. Uh, uh... I'm nervous, Max. I'll admit it. I'm nervous, okay? I'll admit it. I'm nervous, all right? I think that has to do more with uh, the budget of the film, and it rears its ugly head again later on in the movie with having a bird effect of a bunch of birds flying around the house, but they're horribly CGI'd, and that really took away from that scene because it really is one of the scariest scenes of the movie, but it cuts outside of the house where you see all of that, and it just took me out of the moment. But if you really don't care about uh, terrible CGI, it won't bother you. One more problem that I had with the movie that stems from the budget is some of the makeup work. There's one specific scene with a uh, paranormal entity being shown. And James Wan, honestly, for most of the movie, does a great job of showing you enough. Uh, and not showing you too much to where you could be like, oh, that's terrible makeup, that's terrible prosthetic, and take you out of the scene. But in this specific one, they show a little bit too much, and they zoom in too much, and it looks really bad. Uh, and I don't think it's uh, because of like the makeup or anything. I think it's just because they film too close to the actress's face, and you could just see all the prosthetic and makeup work of it, and... Yeah, that kind of took away from that uh, scare a little bit. But right after that, there's such a good jump scare. So he gets back on track with that. <laughs> it's really interesting to think about how this is based off a true story. I mean, the movie is based off of the real lives of Ed and Lorraine Warren. It was originally supposed to be called The Warren Files instead of The Conjuring. But the name later changed to The Conjuring. But it's really interesting to think of how this was a real-life occurrence. And 
it really makes you think, you know, is there ghosts out there or paranormal activity, which honestly, I believe that there are ghosts out there. <laughs> Overall, I would give the film a 9 out of 10, and I would definitely recommend it. It's on the streaming site Tubi. It used to be on Netflix, but when I looked it up yesterday, it was gone. So I had to <laughs> panically search different streaming services to try to find it. And luckily, Tubi had it. But what was disappointing about that was there were ads that would play during the middle of it. And it would happen at the most inconvenient spots possible. I mean, at one scene, which this is a spoiler. So, spoiler warning. Uh, a girl is being thrown around by a paranormal presence and as she's being thrown around it just skips to an ad about Elmo and brushing your teeth. It's time to brush your teeth! Go get your toothbrush! Brush, brushy, brush, brushy, brush, brush, uh. brush, brushy, brush, brushy, brush, brush. Uh, uh, uh. And honestly, it was probably one of the greatest jumps to a commercial ever, but... It was such bad timing, and I just started dying at 3 o'clock in the morning when I was watching this movie. So thank you everyone for watching, and thank you Matt for suggesting this movie. Keep on suggesting movies, and who knows, maybe you'll get a shout out too. But, let's flash forward to the next review.